Today we're at the Ceriza house. We're actually not in the basement. We're in the ADU or accessory dwelling unit at the back of the property. Today we're talking slab insulation and why this slab is so much different than the basement slab. So let's take it away. Brett, tell me a little bit about this ADU slab, because we were in the slab earlier for earlier videos uh, in the basement, and it's like different species. This slab is like a number four rebar. They're 12 or 16 inches on center. Uh, it just seems so much different than the slab down there. What's going on? So that slab has two more floors of house going on top of it, on top of the foundation, as far as the basement itself. So it's three stories over there. This is just an ADU, a place for them to come out and enjoy outside. It'll have a giant garage door here. You'll be able to go in, it'll be open all the time. No bearing is gonna ever be on this floor, just on the perimeter of this floor. Where I'm standing right now is the ADU. That's the, the uh, partition line where the garage door will go and that's just a patio out there. So it just needs enough structure and so it won't crack to pieces. So really the only thing standing or sitting when this house is all done, the only thing sitting in this space is people yes. and furniture. Yes. And that right here where we see we have concrete already poorer than the rebar is going down, we actually have a stem wall or a grade beam actually. Yes, yeah, a grade beam. Right? And in that grade beam, we have uh, piers. And so this is what's called a pier and grade beam foundation. Right. So tell me a little bit about how a pier and grade beam foundation, and you can see an overlay picture of it here, uh, tell me how this supports the weight of the building that's going to sit here. So because this is a sandy or clay like, like loam material on top, it goes very deep. It goes down 13 feet. Okay. So to get bearing, we'd have to go down 13 feet. We actually are going down 25 feet with these, these holes that we drill, and then we'll cage those with the steel that you're going to show here. And then we pour that with concrete and it becomes a pier, something you could set things on. So you got all these little posts that go down to a bearing soil that you can put a grade beam on. That grade beam connects post to post and you can put bearing on that beam. So in the overlay video, we're seeing that we have uh, a machine that's drilling holes right here. Mm -hmm. And we have the rebar cages, which you're also seeing an overlay of. And those rebar cages were put down in those holes. And then they were basically sticking straight up out of the ground. But there was a lot of extra rebar that was sticking up above the ground. And so what had ended up happening is we tied that rebar into the grade beam, right? right. And the grade beam is essentially a, a wide concrete beam, so to speak, that's uh, got a lot of rebar that ties the many piers together. Right. But uh, the, is the grade beam actually supporting the building or is the gray beam just tying the piers together which are supporting the building? No, it's actually supporting the building. Okay. It's like if you've gone on the highway, you see the bridge above you, you see the beam going across that's supporting that whole thing. That's a beam itself. It's a concrete beam is what it is. So we're essentially, we're building a bridge. The posts of a bridge right. are the piers in this structure. And then the roadways between those yeah. are supporting the building, but they're really not bearing on the soil. It's the piers that are bearing on the soil. Right. So I saw in a picture that we're overlaying, we actually have insulation under the grade beams here to stop heat from basically leaching down into the ground. We're also standing on insulation. Right. On this side of the prop, on this side of the project, why is there no insulation over here? Well, that's exterior, and it doesn't matter if it gets hot or cold; it'll be fine. This on the interior, we want to keep it from getting hot or cold depending okay. on the weather. And then why? So normally, when we have a, a place where we go from inside to outside, we have what's called the thermal break, right? right? Why do we not have a thermal break here, between the inside slab and the outside slab? Uh, because we have a giant garage door coming down here, it is a giant thermal break to start with, so it would have been almost useless to put a thermal break there. Is it really a garage door or is it just an exterior door that looks kind of like a garage door? It's an actual garage door. So really, even though we're building a passive house here, you know, just because we're building one house that's passive and highly efficient, it doesn't mean that everything on that property has to be it. This really didn't have those goals. And so really having this continuity between inside and outside wasn't so important for this section because that garage door is really not insulated and is not gonna be a good air seal and everything else. Right. 
Okay, so really designing these projects is not only designing to the loads, it's designing to the needs of the client and to the needs of that specific building and not putting extra effort into places where there's really no yield for that extra effort. Right. Okay. If you're interested in learning more about the Ceriza project or about Passive House or just following this project, please hit subscribe as we show you how to build a better way.